Do you want to learn how to become a web developer? Well, the first step is to pick a code editor. Let me show you how to get set up so that you can start learning today. I'll also show you a bunch of tips and tricks to get the most out of your code editor. Now, there are a lot of code editors to choose from, but the most popular and my favorite is Visual Studio Code. Now don't confuse Visual Studio Code with Visual Studio. VS Code is a free, open source, cross-platform application. It has great support from the community and tons of extensions. It's also fully customizable to fit any developer's preferences and project needs. It's lightweight and fast, which is why it's perfect for web development. Now throughout this video, I'll reference links to other resources, and all of those links will be in the video description below. Included is a free VS Code cheat sheet that includes common keyboard shortcuts, my favorite extensions, themes, fonts, and icon packs. And if you really want to become a VS Code Pro, go check out my VS Code course at vscodehero.com. Now the first step is to install VS Code. So go to code.visualstudio.com slash download. Now this is a cross-platform application that works on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And go ahead and download the appropriate version and begin the installation. And when you get to this section, select additional tasks, I would recommend checking everything. This just fully integrates VS Code into your operating system. And you may or may not see these exact settings if you're on Linux or Mac OS. All right, once the installation is complete, this is what you're gonna see. Now, VS Code can be used for many different programming languages. For now, we're just going to focus on the basic web development languages, which include HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we're gonna set it up for that. But first, let's take a quick tour. On the left side, we see our sidebar. and At the top, we have our Explorer. This is where you're gonna find all of your project files and directories once you have a project folder opened. Next is search. This is pretty self-explanatory. This will allow you to search within your project files. And there's also a find and replace functionality. And next is source control. This uses Git integration. And if you don't know what Git is, don't worry. I have an entire video that explains it and I'll include a link for that. Next is run and debug. And we're not gonna get into debugging in this video, but of course I have a video for that too. And next we have extensions. We'll come back to the extensions tab in just a bit. At the bottom, we have our manage cog. In this menu, you'll find things like settings, keyboard shortcuts, themes, and setting sync. At the top of this menu, we see the command palette, or the shortcut for it is control shift P. If you have a keyboard with an F1 key, you can also just press F1. So this is a really cool feature. In here, you can search for just about anything. You can open a file, change a theme, view the keyboard shortcuts. Basically every command that's available is here in the command palette. And you don't have to complete a word, just start typing and it's going to figure out what you're looking for. It's very helpful, it saves a lot of time. If the only keyboard shortcut that you remember is Control Shift P or F1, then you're gonna be set. Also at the bottom of the user interface is the status bar. It has a lot of useful information. If you're using source control, you're gonna see the branch that you're on. You're also gonna see the current line number and the language of the current document and many other pieces of helpful information. Let's go ahead and check out the keyboard shortcuts. We can go to the manage cog and then go to keyboard shortcuts or we can press Control K, Control S. And you can see here that there are tons of keyboard shortcuts and you can even customize them. And now you'll never remember them all, but try to remember as many as you can as you need them. When you notice yourself needing to use the mouse for something, look for the keyboard shortcut for that action and then try to remember that for next time. You're gonna save a lot of time by using keyboard shortcuts over using the mouse. Now let's look at some settings. To get to the settings, we can go to the Manage Cog and then we can go to settings or you can press control comma. There are just a few settings that I'd recommend that you change right off the bat. And these are just my personal preference. So you can set these however you like. But first, I like to increase the font size just a bit. I'm gonna change mine to 18. I have a larger screen and I just wanna make sure that I don't strain my eyes and make sure that the font is uh, nice and readable. And next is the tab size. So by default it's four, I prefer two, uh, but again, personal preference. Next, let's search. We'll go up here to search settings and let's type in editor bracket pair and I'm gonna enable bracket pair colorization. Now, there used to be an extension for this, uh, but now it's built right into VS Code. So I'm gonna enable that and I'm gonna turn the bracket pairs uh, to true and the horizontal, I'm gonna change that to true as well. And lastly, let's go up here and search for word wrap. And so editor word wrap, I'm gonna turn this to on. This will prevent long lines of code from going off the right side of the page. 
everything automatically saves. So we can just close that. And next we're going to look at themes. Now, again, we can go to our manage cog and go to themes or color theme or the shortcut for that is control K control T. In here, we can use the up and down arrows to cycle through the themes. So I'll give you a quick preview of the built in themes. So we've got abyss, dark, dark plus, can be Monokai, Monokai dimmed, red, solarized dark, tomorrow night blue, high contrast. And then quick warning, we're about to get into the light themes. So put on your sunglasses. So here we go, light, light plus, quiet light, and solarized light. All right, let's get off of that. I don't care much for light themes at all. I prefer the dark themes. So I'm gonna show you my five favorite themes. We can search for them right here by going to browse additional color themes. So there's tons of additional themes here. First, I'm going to search for Night Owl. So Night Owl by Sarah Drasner. This is a great theme. Another one that I like is Cobalt 2. That's by Wes Boss. And then Shades of Purple. This one is by Amadawas. Another great one is the Coder Coder Dark theme. And that's by my friend Jessica at Coder Coder. And then my favorite theme, of course, is my Code Stacker theme. So to install this, I just have to hit enter and it will install and apply this theme. And we just want to just go ahead and say yes, install. And that's it. So now we have a new theme and there are links to all of these themes in the description, or you can just search for them right here or from the extensions panel, which we're going to look at next. All right. So we're actually already in the extensions panel. Uh, it's right here on the side here, and we're just going to clear out the search. And so in the extensions panel, we're going to find all of our installed extensions. And then there's a bunch of popular extensions that we can install or we can manually search for an extension in the marketplace. So the first extension that we're going to look at is Live Server. Now, this is a very popular extension with over 17 million downloads. This extension sets up a local web server so that you can see changes that you make to your code in real time without having to reload. It's a must have for web development. So let's go ahead and install this. The next extension we're going to look at is called Prettier. This extension helps you to keep your code formatted and uniform throughout. It makes your code pretty. Next, we're going to look for auto rename tag. Whenever you change an HTML tag, it automatically uh, renames the corresponding tag. So it just saves you a little bit of time. There's a couple of other things that you can install to customize VS Code. Uh, one of them is uh, icon packs. So we're going to look for VS Code dash icon. I like these icons. So this adds some icons to your files and folders to make them easily identifiable. The other thing that we can look for are product icon packs. So the one that I like is called Fluent Icon. And so what that does is it changes the icons on the left side in your sidebar. So I'm going to install that. Now you can see that the icons on the left side just look a little different. Here's the default and here are the Fluent icons. And there are other icon packs that you can choose from as well. Next, let's open up a project folder. So there are several ways to go about doing this from outside of VS Code. Uh, I'm on Windows, so depending on the operating system that you're using, it might differ. But I can right click on a folder that I want to open up in VS Code and then open with VS Code. And you'll want to say, yes, I trust this author. And now you can see that we have our demo folder opened in VS Code. We can close this getting started. Now, the other way is from inside VS Code. We can go to File and then Open Folder. And then again, just pick the folder that you want to open up in VS Code from your Operating System File Explorer. So now that we have a project folder open, we can now add a folder structure and some files. In a typical basic website, you're going to have an index.html file, a CSS folder containing your style sheets, and a JS folder containing your JavaScript files. So let's go ahead and add our index.html file. So we can go right here, add new file. We're going to name it index.html. So as we create a file, it automatically opens it for us. Next, let's create a new folder. So right here, add new folder. We're going to name this one CSS. And then inside this folder, we're going to create a new file. We're going to name this style.css. So now we have that file and folder created. Now there's a shortcut. Instead of creating a folder and a file at the same time, we can just click add file and now we can create a folder and file at the same time. So we want to create a JS directory and then slash and we'll create an app.js file. So now it creates the folder and the file for us. And again, it opened the file. 
Now to switch between these files, we can use Control Tab or Control Shift Tab to go forward and backward between the files. If we want to close a file, we can press Control W. So let's just close all of these files. A great way to open a file, again, instead of using our mouse, we can press Control P and then we have our files right here ready for us and we can just select which file we want to open and hit enter. If you have a lot of files to search through, just start typing the name of the file and it's going to pop up. Now notice something, if I click on app.js, it pops up here and it's italicized. And if I click on style.js, it's replaced right here. So this is a preview. If you want to open and keep the file open, you have to either double click the file and now it will remain open or edit something inside the file and now it will remain open as well. And you'll notice that none of these are italicized anymore. Now, if you want to change this functionality, we can go to the settings. So control comma, and then let's search for enable preview. So workbench editor enable preview. Let's go ahead and uncheck that and we can close the settings. Let's close these files and then let me click on app and you see this not italicized. I can click on style and it's not italicized and they remain open as we click through. I prefer it this way. All right, next I want to show you my favorite built-in feature of VS Code, and it's called Emmet. Now think of Emmet as a shorthand. With it, you can easily write a lot of code quickly, and it dramatically speeds up your HTML and CSS workflow. Now here, I'm gonna demonstrate creating an HTML page. You can do this by just pressing exclamation point. You're gonna see Emmet pop up. It says Emmet abbreviation. So I'm gonna press enter now, and there we have it, a basic blank HTML web page ready to go. If you've never seen HTML before and you have no clue what all of this is, don't worry. I'm just demonstrating the capabilities of VS Code and Emmet. You don't have to know exactly what any of this means right now. So other things that we can do, we go down here, here to the body and we start typing. We can create a div by just typing div, enter, and that creates a div tag for us. We can automatically start typing inside this div tag. We can go below that and then let's create a list. So we'll say UL and we can say greater than LI times four. So we just created a list with four items in it. I could also uh, create a div with the class of my class just by typing period my class. And now we have the div with the class of my class. I can create an input and I can give it an ID of who and a class of bar just by typing this. And there we go, we have our input with the ID and class. Now if I just type input, then we can see in this pop-up all of the different input types that we can select from. So if I needed a date input, just hit enter, and now I have a date input. And within it, you can create a really complex HTML structure with one line. And it's really awesome, and I have an entire video on Emmet if you want to learn more. Now, somewhat similar to Emmet is IntelliSense. Now this is another built-in feature of VS Code, and it helps you with context-aware suggestions. IntelliSense features are sometimes called by other names such as code completion, code assist, or code hinting. VS Code IntelliSense is provided for JavaScript, TypeScript, JSON, HTML, CSS, SCSS, and less out of the box. And VS Code supports word-based completions for any programming language, but it can also be configured to have richer IntelliSense by installing a language extension. So if we go over to extensions, and we can go to filter, category, and then programming languages. And we're going to see all of these different programming languages that we can choose from. And these include Python, C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Go, PHP, Ruby, and Rust. So let's see what IntelliSense can do. We're going to go to the app.js file. This is a JavaScript file. So we're going to type document and we can see it's already starting to help us. So let's hit enter. We want document. And then we're going to press period. And this is going to give us a list of suggestions. These are all of the available properties and methods and functions available to us on document. Now, no developer can remember every method, function, and property available. So IntelliSense helps us and allows us to write code much faster. All right, now when you're writing code, you want as much space as possible. Right now I have this very zoomed in. So this is not exactly what it would look like on your computer, uh, but I'm kind of running out of space here. We can actually get rid of this sidebar. We press control B, that's gonna close the sidebar. So remember B is for sidebar. We we'll press control B again, it will bring it right back. But if we want to open a specific menu in the sidebar, then those have specific keyboard shortcuts as well. 
So control shift E is the explorer. Control shift F is the search. Control shift G is the source control. Control shift D is debug. And control shift X is extensions. So control shift E, we'll go back to the explorer. Now another awesome feature of VS Code is the ability to split editors. So let's press control B, we're gonna close the sidebar. And now let's say I want to work on these side by side. So I'll take my app.js and just move it right over here. And now I can have two files open side by side. Now I can also put this down below horizontally if I wanted to. I guess that might be a little better if my monitor was vertical, but we can put it wherever we want. All right, so let's move this back over here. Now there are a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that will help you to navigate quickly through your code and manipulate the text. And of course, you could use the arrow keys to move around. That's pretty easy. But if we hold down the control key while we move our arrow keys, it moves us one word at a time instead of one character at a time. That makes it a little bit quicker. Let's say we wanted to move this div down below the UL. We could, you know, use our mouse and copy it and paste it and delete it and do all of that. Uh, but just with our keyboard, we can press the Alt key and then the up and down arrows. We can move this line now anywhere we want. And let's say I want to duplicate uh, these LIs. I wanted to add uh, two more LIs. So I can press Alt, Shift, down arrow and add as many LIs as I want. Now, maybe I want to change uh, all of these divs here to span tags. So I can press Control D and it's gonna select the current word that the cursor is on. But if I press Control D again, it's gonna select the next occurrence of that same word and keep pressing it and select as many as I want. Now they're all selected. I have multiple cursors going on here. Now I can start typing and I can say span. So now all of the divs turned into span. Now let's say I want to type into all of these LIs at the same time. Well, if I click into here, I can hold down the Alt key and I can create multiple cursors all at the same time. And then I can type into all of them. And then of course, as in just about every other application, if I did something that I didn't mean to do, I can press Control Z to undo it. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the terminal. This is probably the scariest subject for a lot of people, but it's really not that scary, I promise. There's so much that we can do with the terminal. So the easiest way to open the terminal is by pressing Control backtick. Or if you have to use the mouse, go up here to Terminal and then New Terminal. All right, so I'm just going to press Control backtick. That is the key to the left of the number one on your keyboard. All right, so I, again, I'm on Windows. So this came up to PowerShell. Windows has PowerShell or the command line. And on Windows, I actually prefer Git Bash. And if you're on Linux or Mac OS, I prefer ZSH. If we go up here to the right of this plus, there's a down arrow. We can select PowerShell, Command Prompt, or Git Bash. So I'm going to select Git Bash. I already have that installed. And if you don't have Git Bash installed, don't worry. I have an entire video on Git where I'll show you how to get it installed. The link, of course, is in the description below. So that started a new Bash terminal. I want to select my uh, default terminal. So I'm going to go to Select Default Profile. And I'm going to select Git Bash as my default. Let's go ahead and close out this PowerShell. We're going to close out this Bash. So now when I press Control Backtick, it's going to automatically open up a Bash terminal for me. So again, there's a lot that we can do with the terminal. You're going to have to use it at some point. Uh, you can traverse directories, create directories, create files. You're going to use it for Node.js and NPM. You're going to use it for Git version controlling and so many other things. VS Code is a powerful and versatile code writing application, and it can handle every web development language that you would want to use. So what next? If you're just starting out, check out my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript crash courses to start with. And I have an entire roadmap that you can follow, and I'll include the link to that in the description. If this video was helpful, help me out by giving it a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.